What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 20 minutes of insane but real WWE backstage stories. Been looking forward to checking this particular video out uh, since a few of you guys uh, suggested I check it out on Twitter. So, here we are. Should be a very interesting one. Appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. We're gonna get right into this one because it's 20 minutes of some information that i may not have known and some of the information y'all may not have known as well let's get right into this one man a wrestler quit wwe because he couldn't afford to work for them while big name wrestlers can make a lot of money less popular wrestlers don't make nearly as much yeah additionally wrestlers have to pay for the majority of their travel expenses like mm -hmm. the hotel they stay at the rental car they use the food they eat and more this can get really expensive and a wrestler named super crazy quit wwe because of it crazy mm -hmm. lived in mexico and was only getting paid i know that dollars for each show he was on because of all the expenses and the amount he was earning super crazy realized he couldn't afford to keep doing this and quit wwe i did not know that i nuns knew that i knew the part of they pretty much have to pay for their travel and stuff like that to get to one show to the next which once again it's not a just monday night raw and smackdown and maybe the occasional ple it's the house shows is other shows that they have so that's a lot of traveling that can add up to some a lot of money now for the stars that have the bigger contracts it's probably much of nothing to them but paying them 500 dollars per show that's it and i remember super crazy was on a lot of shows that's kind of it's kind of messed up bro CM Punk tried to ban his own mother from attending WWE shows. Oh. In 2013, Punk revealed he had given his mom over $100,000, but she threatened him once Punk stopped sending her money. Oh, One wow. Of was to release potentially embarrassing information about her son, which CM Punk thought had to do with him getting arrested while in school. Punk filed a restraining order against his mom, wow. which was granted. He also asked the court to ban her from WWE shows, but it wasn't revealed if the judge granted that request. Under the I did not know that. Damn. He had beef with his own moms. I, I hope they were able to reconcile that. That sucks. Jeez. Damn. CM Punk just, he be going through it. Jesus. The Giant was once arrested. In 1989, Andre was wrestling a match against the Ultimate Warrior in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. A local cameraman was there to film the show, but Andre told him not to record his match. The cameraman didn't, but for some reason, Andre thought he did. The Giant slapped the man and destroyed oh. the camera. A police officer who was overseeing the event saw this and told Andre he was being arrested. Andre said no, so the officer explained it wasn't a big problem and Andre would be released after posting bail. The Giant complied, but he refused to be handcuffed the yeah officer obliged and after booking the eighth wonder of the world andre was freed the giant ended up being fined 100 dollars for criminal mischief wow three dollars for the camera he broke a WWE fan learned the hard way That's not crazy. to Lesnar for a picture. The morning before a WWE show, Lesnar was having breakfast at a hotel when a fan approached Brock and said he would pay for Brock's meal and for Brock's security guard. Lesnar thanked the fan and ordered over $100 in food. After Lesnar finished, the fan asked if he could get a picture, and Brock's security said, We appreciate the gesture, but we're not going to be doing anything today. Daniel Bryan stood up for himself and... Well, well, you know, that's that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Give you essentially gave his money away to redact it. <laughs> I can't say his name no more. <laughs> Almost got in trouble. Shortly after he made his WWE debut in 2010, Daniel Bryan was waiting at an airport for his flight. Ezekiel Jackson, another WWE wrestler who had been there longer than Bryan, told Daniel he was taking Daniel's seat on the plane because it was nicer than his. Normally, newcomers to WWE are supposed to give up their seats to yeah. better talent, but Daniel Bryan did it. Bryan said he would have gladly given up his seat to Ezekiel Jackson, but since Jackson asked so rudely, Daniel wasn't going to. William Regal, a wrestling legend who was sitting nearby, stood up for Daniel Bryan and said to Ezekiel, do you even know who you're talking to? This man is like a son to me and has more talent in his little finger than you have in your entire body. Jackson walked away Damn. and Daniel Bryan still ended up giving a seat to someone else. In 1998, huh. an 11-year-old kid asked Stone Cold Steve Austin what he thought of Goldberg. Here's what Austin said. What do you think of Dylan Goldberg? Well, I think he's just fine at what he does, but you know, he's done a pretty good job of copying me, but <laughs> yeah, I have nothing personal against him. <laughs> that's funny i'm gonna be honest with you as a kid i always wanted to know who will win a match goldberg or stone cold i always wanted to know two bald men who's gonna win <laughs> 
We'll never know. We'll never know. That was always a big what if for me. WCW's Goldberg versus Stone Cold Steve Austin, Prime Stone Cold. Y'all comment down below. Who would y'all have wanted to see win? I'm always going. I love Goldberg at that time. But I'm still going to pick Stone Cold, bro. Sorry. Sorry. So angry that Taker was ready to fight him for real. The wrestler Mabel, also known as Viscera, was Damn. for accidentally injuring his opponents. He even broke yeah. Undertaker's orbital bone in 1995. However, during the 1996 Royal Rumble match, Mabel hurt yet another wrestler. Undertaker became livid backstage and started taping his fists. Luckily, the dead man didn't resort to violence, but Mabel was fired shortly after this incident. Damn, Seth I didn't even Rollins know that. once got in trouble for using an ice pack. Shortly after Rollins began wrestling at WWE's main roster, he had just finished a match and put an ice pack on his neck after he got backstage. John Cena saw this and asked Rollins how many matches Seth had wrestled on the main roster, to which Rollins said three. The reason Cena asked this is because new WWE wrestlers aren't supposed to use ice packs. Likewise, Summer Rae also got called out by Randy Orton for icing her foot when she was new. The reason newcomers aren't supposed to use ice packs is that it's believed they shouldn't need them after only wrestling in WWE for a short while. In 1990, damn, bro. <laughs> Damn, what that must be like some some unwritten rule like, oh, yeah, you've only wrestled like a handful of matches. Why the fuck you need an ice pack? I don't know, because my 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 arm or my leg or whatever is sore. I can't I can't ice it up and cool it down. No. Oh, OK. All right. That's one of those wrestling unwritten rules, apparently. Five, Owen Hart pulled a legendary prank on Vince McMahon. At the In Your House 5 pay-per-view, Triple H fought Henry Godwin in a hog pen match with real pigs. Before the show, the pigs were being dropped off at the arena. The person delivering the pigs was wondering where they needed to go. Owen Hart overheard this and had them put the pigs in Vince McMahon's wow. office. When McMahon opened the door, one of the pigs came running out and Vince instantly knew he'd been pranked by Owen. That's funny. Mark Henry once attacked a WWE crew member for looking at a female wrestler. AJ Lee was stretching backstage and was being stared at by a local WWE crew member. Mark Henry saw what the man was doing and lifted him up and pinned him against wow. the wall. Wow. It's unknown what Henry did to the crew member, but AJ Lee became ecstatic over what Mark did for her. Randy uh, Orton almost killed himself. Oh, uh, definitely mad at the mad the ash, man. Hey, do you know? Is this true? <laughs> mad to ask him. If so, that's crazy, man. Shout out to Mark Henry. If that is, that story is true out here, you know, being an honorable man. You know, hey, what you, why are you looking at her ass like that, man? Why are you looking at her like that? Him Getting hemmed up by Mark Henry, I bet it changed that guy's life forever. <laughs> in 2006, Randy Orton woke up in a hospital and wasn't sure why he was there. As it turned out, the Viper had overdosed on sleeping medication and passed out. I Randy think I heard about this. Found him and saw that Orton wasn't breathing. Randy Orton was then rushed to the hospital where doctors saved his life. Before becoming a wrestler, That's a close doctor, call. Booker T was a criminal. By age 13, Booker had lost both of his parents. Mm -hmm. He started working at a Wendy's restaurant to support himself and his siblings. Money was still an issue for Booker T, so he decided to rob the Wendy's that he worked at. He got away with it and ended up committing over 20 armed robberies at different Wendy's locations. Damn. Booker and his accomplices wore their Wendy's uniforms during the robberies, so police eventually figured out that it was someone who worked at the restaurant who was committing the robberies. Booker was arrested at the age of 22 and Damn. spent a little over a year and a half in prison. As he was leaving the prison, a police officer looked at Booker T and said, I'll see you when you get back. Not mm. only did Booker never go back to prison, but he also became a multi-time world champion and eventually a WWE Hall of Famer. And it's one of those things where, he, you know, obviously he was proud of, of his environment, but someone saying, I'll see you when you get back, that's always should be like an indication to you that, all right, you need to change. You got to change because he's expecting you to come back. But Little did that guy know Booker T wasn't coming back and he's in a much better place for it. You know, I'm not here to judge people's past. I'm here to look at, you know, what you're doing now. And Booker T is one of the better things about WWE still to this day. He's a, a Hall of Famer, uh, a legend in the game, in the wrestling world. So. Shawn Michaels was paid $750,000 a year for four years to do basically nothing. Wow. At the 1998 Royal Rumble, Shawn Michaels injured his back and soon had to retire from wrestling. While he would make appearances on TV from time to time, Michaels was not used often in WWE. Former WWE commentator Jim Ross revealed that despite not doing much, WWE still paid HBK $750,000 a year. We paid Shawn $750,000 a year for about four years. Ooh. Do nothing. 
part of the reason was that Vincent Man valued Shawn Michaels so uh -huh. highly. The other reason was to prevent Shawn from joining WWE's competitor, yep. WCW. That's what it was. This paying off for McMahon because, in 2002, Shawn Michaels returned to the ring. Shawn wrestled for another eight years and had some of the greatest WWE matches of all time. Yep, did that's why they did that. Makes sense. And 750k back then, with inflation now, is definitely some millions, bro. That's crazy. That's insane. But it worked out because he didn't jump ship. He didn't go to WCW. He ended up staying around for a little bit. He was able to return. Got his got his body, got his uh his mental together. And his second run, arguably, some would say, and I you you couldn't you couldn't get mad if someone said that his second run may have been better than his first run because the matches and the stories he was in were just peak cinema, bro. Peak cinema. Did you know, before joining WWE, Alundra Blaze, or Medusa, was homeless and living on the streets. She also owed the IRS $80,000. However, Vince McMahon got in touch with Alundra and offered her a WWE contract. McMahon also asked her if there was anything else he could do for her. The future WWE Hall of Famer mentioned her debt, and the next day, Vince uh -huh. McMahon sent her a check for $80,000. The sad part is, about yep. two years later, Alundra Blaze would join WWE's competitor, WCW, and drop the women's championship yep. in the trash on TV. Charlotte Flair's ex-husband sued her and her father, Ric Flair. Charlotte was married to a man named Ricky Johnson from 2010 to 2013. In 2017, Charlotte and Ric Flair released an autobiography called Second Nature. Charlotte revealed that she left Ricky Johnson because he allegedly abused her. Oh. Johnson then filed a lawsuit against his ex-wife and her dad, saying that the allegations made in the book weren't true. The legal battle ended with both parties settling out of court for an uh -huh. undisclosed amount of money. This so something definitely happened, you know, we will never know. It's none of our business, really, to be honest with you. But I, I didn't know that was the situation. I actually didn't know she was married prior to uh, being uh, married to Andrade. I did not know that. But, uh, yeah, nine times out of ten, something like that happens. There may be some valid validity to it if they settled it uh, for undis uh, undisclosed amount. So I don't know. But uh, she seems like she's in a much better place, wishing her a speedy recovery as well from uh, injury. This is why John Cena is the GOAT. Cena has granted over 650 wishes for the Ooh. Make a Wish Foundation. It's easy to see that Cena did all that just to make himself look good, but that's not true at all. John Cena did not want to publicly share the wishes he was granting, and for a while, he didn't. Cena only agreed to after Vince McMahon told him that letting people know about the work Cena was doing would make them more inclined to get involved and support Make a Wish. A WWE wrestler was John's a good guy, bro. From what we know, he he does he <laughs> he's out here providing the most make a wishes. I mean, p kids love John Cena. It's always been like that. So that's what Vince always wanted, and it worked. Kids love John Cena. So I got from what I've always heard, he seems like a good guy. I know there's recently some rumors going on about with John and Alex Riley. Uh, that used to be in WWE. I'm not sure how true that is. But from what I've always heard and videos I've seen, he seems like a uh, straightforward guy. He's going to kill Paul Heyman on live TV. Tommy Dreamer was the heart and soul of ECW, but during his time with the company, he turned down much better contracts with WWE. This was due in part to the owner of ECW, Paul Heyman, persuading Tommy to stay. When ECW went out of business in 2001, Dreamer was left without a job and forced to live with his parents. Oh. Dreamer also learned that Heyman had secretly been getting paid by WWE for years. Even worse, oh. Tommy was told he was going to make his WWE debut at WrestleMania 17, but plans fell through. This put Dreamer in a very dark place and he got a hold of a gun. Whoa. His plan was to go to WrestleMania 17, jump the barricade, shoot Paul Heyman, Whoa. who was doing commentary, and then turn the gun on himself. Whoa. As he was contemplating all this, Tommy Dreamer got a call from a number he didn't recognize. He let it go to voicemail and the recording said, hey Tommy, it's Jim Ross. Just want to let you know we are still thinking about you. We are going to get it done. Just got to hang tight. Thank you. This is all Dreamer needed to turn everything around. A WWE wrestler. So if he didn't get that phone call, uh, holy damn. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Alrighty then, that, that was super dark. Once went to jail for doing something pretty disgusting to a flight attendant. In 1997, William Regal was flying from Tokyo to Detroit. While on the plane, the English wrestling star took some pills and went to the bathroom. He didn't close the door all the way, so a female flight attendant came over. William Regal was already doing his business, so when he turned around to face her, he started peeing on the woman. Oh, the no. flight made a stop in Anchorage, Alaska, and William Regal was thrown in jail. Oh. A teenager once sued like an accident. H and WWE. In 2011, an 18 year old named Ralph Basham from Kentucky filed a lawsuit claiming uh -huh. he was injured while attending a WWE show in 2000. During the event, I've seen the Rocky this. Triple H were having a match and at one point started fighting amongst the crowd. According yeah. to the lawsuit, a woman got knocked over and landed on Basham, injuring his right knee. The teenager said the injury didn't allow him to compete in sports and affected his childhood. Since WWE refused to cover any expenses, this led to the 18 year old suing the company as well as The Rock and Triple H. The lawsuit yeah. went on for nearly four years until the teenager agreed to dismiss the case. While it's unknown, it's likely WWE and or Triple H in The Rock gave the teen some money in order to get him to let it go. Bobby Lashley It's either that or it's just a, bro, that's four years. That's a lot of lawyer fees at that, that, bro. And you know, WWE's well protected. They gonna do whatever they can to protect their top talent, protect themselves. So it could be either money was given for him to let it go or it could have been a situation where the lawyer fees just got too much and they were gonna they were gonna push this until they couldn't push this no more i'm i'm i'm, I'm thinking it could have possibly been the wwe side of things just like nah we not nah we we'll we'll drag this out for as long as we need to we have the money and the resources to do it so but i definitely remember hearing about that particular situation got fired from WWE for complaining about money. In February 2008, Bobby Lashley was released from WWE while recovering from an injury. According to former WWE wrestler The Sandman, the reason WWE fired Lashley was because he complained about how much he was paid for his WrestleMania 23 match. Sandman said that the Almighty was given half a million dollars for his Battle of the Billionaires match with Umaga. Apparently, Lashley felt he deserved more, which angered Vince McMahon. Oh, wow. Leading to Bobby's release less than a year later. I did not know that. A wrestler once died and still wrestled wrestled the same day. Huh? While driving to a show in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, WWE and ECW wrestler The Sandman overdosed on an opioid called New Bay, oh. which killed him. The wrestlers that he was driving with pretended not to know him and dropped Sandman off at a nearby hospital. The medical staff shot adrenaline into Sandman's heart, which thankfully brought him back to life. Whoa. The Sandman still made the show and wrestled as if he hadn't died earlier that day. Yeah, nah, he, Sandman was different, bro. They dropped him off. We don't know the guy. They brought him back to life. And then he proceeds to go to a wrestling event, a wrestling show, and wrestle like he didn't just KO, didn't just GG himself. Yeah, he was built different. I can't even. He was built different. Can't put that in words. Santino Morella almost went broke trying to become a WWE wrestler. In 2005, Santino moved from his home in Ontario, Canada and began training at WWE's development system, Ohio Valley Wrestling. Uh -huh. Morella was a student, so he wasn't being paid, and since he wasn't a US yep. citizen, he couldn't work either. Santino used all of his savings to survive and even had to borrow $400 from his mom at one point. However, right when his bank account hit zero, WWE gave Morella a call and signed him to a contract. Uh -huh. You won't believe what this guy told The Undertaker. Before the dead man made his WWE debut, he wrestled for a different company called WCW. Yep. The Undertaker was in a meeting with an executive to renegotiate his contract. The executive told Taker, Mark, you're a great athlete, but no one is ever going to pay money yep, to see you bro. wrestle. I heard this so story. He told this, Undertaker left WCW and joined WWE, where he main evented five WrestleManias and became one of the company's most popular wrestlers. WWE and it's just one of those things to kind of show you guys that just because one person says a certain thing doesn't mean it to be true if someone tell you hey you're not going to be this you can't achieve this don't listen to them they don't know who are they to tell you they just going off of what they think they know but at the end of the day if you got breath in your uh breath in your lungs you you wake up every day you're given that ability to wake up every day then you have the opportunity to prove that person wrong Every single time. Every time. Be 
actually encouraged a wrestler to physically hurt another competitor. In 2005, Chris Masters made his WWE debut. Backstage, WWE officials were pressuring Masters, telling him his career would be over if he messed up his first appearance. They told Chris to hit his opponent, Stevie Richards, hard, even saying, don't worry, it's only Stevie. Chris That's Masters did what up. he was told, and unsurprisingly, he broke Stevie Richards' nose. Oh, they could bruise him. Jesus! Masters was in tears after the match. However, Stevie Richards comforted Chris Masters and told him it was all okay. Andre I believe he has a channel now. I believe he, he does have a YouTube channel now. Uh, him and Maven, I believe. I've seen him pop up in my recommended feed. I may have to check that out to see his take on that, if that's an actual true story. Let me know down below if he's made a video talking about that Chris Masters situation. I'll definitely check it out for sure. The Giant was a legendary drinker. The man famously drank 119 12 ounce bottles of beer Jesus! over the course of six hours. One time, Andre the Giant was at a hotel and got so drunk that he fell asleep in the lobby. Nobody could wake him up, and he was so big that it was impossible to move him. The hotel staff ended up leaving Andre on the floor, and the Giant spent <laughs> the entire night in the hotel lobby. What? Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins bring their one-year-old daughter with them everywhere they go, including WWE shows. Becky revealed in an interview that during an episode of Monday Night Raw, she opened the show, then went backstage, put her daughter to bed, and then went and did guest commentary. Lynch also said that while it is tough traveling with a baby, it makes everything more rewarding and fulfilling. That's awesome. That's WWE cool. Hall of Famer Sting nearly died in 1997. On Monday Night Nitro, Sting repelled from the rafters for the very first time. Moments before that happened, Sting was told to step over the railing and be prepared to jump down. Just then, the stunt crew realized that Sting's gear was on backward oh, and they had man. to fix the rope while Sting was standing on the edge. The Ooh. icon revealed in an interview that had he jumped, he would have fallen to his death. Mm -mm -mm. Did you? And uh, I did see the clip of Sting on his very last dynamite. He repelled from the rafters. That was that was cool to see, man. I'm definitely gonna check out his last match with him and Darby versus the Young Bucks. It's Sting, bro. Doesn't matter if you're a fan of WCW or WWE. It's fucking Sting. I have to check this out. I have to. I'm going to. So I'll probably do a live stream reactions for AEW this. I think it's Sunday. So. Be on the lookout for that. Gonna do it on my personal page. I gotta check this out. It's fucking steam. But anything involving Raptors, I just, uh, I get a little nervous. Obviously, if you know, you know. Um, the fact that he almost damn near jumped and almost killed himself because of production crew not realizing, oh shit, it's on back. Oh man, we wouldn't have steam now. So yeah. Mm -mm. You know, in 2011, Mark Henry was told to go out to the ring and wrestle a match against yep. Sakara. Yeah, we've heard about Sakara this. Sakara never came out, and the entire thing was a prank pulled on Mark Henry. Yep. Henry felt disrespected and became so mad that he was going to quit WWE. Vince McMahon later apologized, but thought that the anger Mark Henry experienced would make for a great character. What you did? created the Hall of Pain storyline that eventually led to Henry becoming World Heavyweight Champion. Batista broke a WWE rule and had to pay over $100,000. I think I've we've seen this one too. WWE made the controversial decision to go from TV 14 to PG. Some fans weren't happy about this and even some wrestlers felt it was the wrong decision. One of the reasons was that wrestlers were no longer allowed to bleed. bleed Batista yeah. didn't like it and decided to bleed during a match against Chris Jericho. Uh -huh. He all knew there'd be consequences, but he didn't realize how bad it was going to be. Batista was fined $100,000 while Chris Jericho, the referee, and the producer for the match were each fined 5000 Batista wow. nobly covered the three fines on top of his own, forcing him to pay $115,000. That just lets you know how much money Batista was making and how much of a top guy he was when he covered everybody's fine that was involved. Don't worry, I got y'all. This was on me. And dropped 115 k Even back then, that's still a lot of money. Even now, that's a lot of fucking money. People will tell you, oh, it's not it's not as much as it used to be. But 115K in one day to pay for a fine. That's a shit ton of money, bro. The Big Show once pooped himself while wrestling a match. Yep, heard about During this one. Show in South Africa, the world's largest athlete was having a match with Brock Lesnar. Big Show had eaten some bad food before the match, which led to something unfortunate happening. Lesnar gave Big Show the F5 that then caused Big Show to have a messy accident. Brock thought it was hilarious, but Big Show didn't find it as humorous. 
Bill right. Goldberg mm. did not want to be called Goldberg. When he was trained to become a wrestler, Bill had to come up with a ring name. He ended up deciding to call himself the Hybrid. However, WCW, the company he was wrestling for, said he couldn't use it because they wouldn't be able to sell merchandise. Goldberg said he would never be popular enough to sell anything. WCW disagreed and decided to use wow. Bill Goldberg's surname, which he's continued to be called ever since. Scott, Which worked out because the Hybrid, that wouldn't have worked. But Goldberg, that worked back then, and it still works. To an extent. Hall was a genius for what he put in his contract. Hall's agent revealed that when the bad guy went to WCW, there was a special condition in his contract that made Scott millions of dollars. The deal was that if WCW signed anyone and they were getting paid more money than Scott Hall, then WCW would have to increase Hall's salary to match it. Because what? This, Scott Hall earned over $4 million from his WCW contract. Big Show and the Great Cully once got into- How is that even legal? Why did they? Bro, they were trying their hardest to bury WWE that they were letting motherfuckers come up with contract stipulations. If anyone that you hire while I'm here makes more than me, you have to make me match their amount. And they agreed. That's how much they wanted to bury WWE back then, bro. Well, WWF at the time to a real fight backstage. The two giants had issues with each other for a while, but things got heated I didn't know that. in a match in Puerto Rico. During the show, Kali gave his opponent a huge chop across the chest, which was Big Show's signature move. Oh. After the match, Big Show confronted Kali backstage about using his move. They got into an argument, leaned to Big Show punching Kali in the face. Damn. The Indian native fought back, and soon a real fight between the WWE wrestlers broke out. In the chaos, Big Show tripped over a chair and fell to the ground. Kali stood on top of them, and the fight came to an end. Big Show was later forced to apologize for throwing the first punch, which yeah. the great Kali accepted. CM Punk. Now see how they handled that? There's a fight. You didn't really, probably people don't know about this. Fight, they got into it, and they apologized, and they moved on. It's, it's simple, bro. It's wrestling. It's simple. It's simple. I'm gonna leave that there. And it's funny that CM Punk showed up in this particular next clip. It's crazy, huh? Crazy. And Booker T had real beef with each other backstage. Here we it go. Was hilarious. Here we go. While in the locker room with the other wrestlers, CM Punk got up and said, as the locker room leader, I'm telling all of you guys to pick up your trash. Well, some of the wrestlers saw Punk as the leader, Booker T did not. Uh -huh. To show that, Booker literally threw his trash on the floor right after CM Punk made his command. A WWE commentator right. once beat a wrestler in a real fight. In 2008, WWE was doing its yearly tribute to the troop show in Iraq. JBL had been hazing and pulling pranks on his co-workers, uh -huh. which included dumping ice on ring announcer Lillian Garcia while she was asleep. Another recipient of JBL's bullying was commentator Joey Styles. Yep. Styles, though, didn't take it and ended up punching the former WWE champion in the face. Joey's strike ended up giving JBL a black eye, which could faintly be seen on TV a few days after the incident. According uh -huh. to those who were there, JBL was a lot quieter after being punched. Why did hey, Joey, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't take that shit. <laughs> and I, I wish Morrow would have been in that situation. Uh, but that, you know, Joey and Morrow, different people. And obviously Morrow, uh, Morrow Ronaldo, he, he's, he wasn't, uh, he's not a confrontational type of guy. So, you know, I can't expect him to fight back in that way. And I wish he was still there on commentary because he was definitely great for NXT. Um, they did and on the main roster as well. But it just shows the difference of personalities and and uh also once again, sometimes the bullies gotta get punched in the face. <laughs> sometimes they do for them to understand, hey, chill the fuck out. So I wish Mara would have been one of those individuals, but Unfortunately, just he wasn't like that, you know, not everybody's going to be ready to punch someone in the face. But either way, it still falls on JBL not to be such an asshole, so. Why did Triple H change his attire and start wearing biker shorts? In 2003, at a non-televised WWE event in San Jose, California, Triple H wrestled his first ever match against Goldberg. During the fight, Triple H got injured and tore his groin. To help him walk, the game had to start wearing biker shorts. Mm -hmm. However, the shorts were so tight that multiple people had helped Triple H get into them. Damn. This is why The Miz deserves way more respect. After WrestleMania 28, WWE hosted an after party for the wrestlers and WWE employees. However, the WWE writers were not allowed to attend. Wow. When The Miz found out about this, he decided not to attend the party and instead bought dinner for all of the writers.
Oh, that's when cool. When Sakara came to WWE, that's dope. he was really excited to meet Kurt Hawkins, but it's not for the reason you're thinking. Kurt was surprised by this, considering he had only been in WWE for a few years and had wrestled in many big matches. After talking with his co-workers, Kurt found out that the reason Sin Cara was excited to meet him was because Sin Cara thought Kurt Hawkins was Edge. John serious, Cena once bro? refused to lose the WWE Championship to a younger wrestler. In 2010, uh -oh. Jack Swagger won the Money in the Bank contract at WrestleMania. The next night on Raw, Swagger attacked and was ready to cash in on the WWE Champion. However, Cena recovered before the All-American American could use his Money in the Bank contract. Jack Swagger shared years later that backstage, John Cena refused to lose the <laughs> Jack Swagger instead cashed in his briefcase on SmackDown and defeating Chris Jericho to become the World Heavyweight Champion. A few days after that, Cena said this, to Jack Swagger. You're not championship material. Yeah. This is likely how John Cena legitimately felt about Swagger. Yeah. Did you uh, know before? Eh. Let's be honest here. Was he wrong? No, like seriously. Was was John Cena wrong? Cause his title reign is not memorable at all. The most personality he ended up getting is when he was with Zeb Coulter. The We The People gimmick. And that's because of Zeb Coulter and the chant. It wasn't because of Jack Swagger. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's again, like I said, was he wrong? <laughs> Before they were signed by WWE, Jeff and Matt Hardy would be paid $150 per match. Uh -huh. However, the Italian Stallion, the man who trained Jeff and Matt, took $100 yep, as a booking, booking fee. fee uh... This left the Hardys with only $50 after every match. On top of that, Jeff and Matt also had to pay for their own travel expenses. There was also an incident where the Italian Stallion abandoned the Hardys and left them stranded when they were supposed to travel to a show. After that, the Hardys told WWE to call them directly if they ever wanted to use either Jeff or Matt. Not only did WWE do that but they eventually offered the brothers full-time contracts uh -huh. and the hardys didn't have to give the stallion a single penny awesome rick flair awesome story five thousand dollars because he refused to take a picture at the unforgiven pay-per-view in 2005 flair fought carlito for the intercontinental championship the nature boy won and after the match wwe wanted to get a picture of rick with the belt however flair refused because he would have to take off his shirt which he didn't want to out of pride uh -huh. WWE ended up finding the champion five thousand dollars for not taking the picture this wrestler Sound about destroyed right. The Undertaker's career. Early in his WWE career, Undertaker had a huge match against the WWE Champion, Hulk Hogan. During the fight, Ric Flair interfered and helped the dead man hit Hogan with a tombstone pile driver onto a chair. Immediately after the move, Hulk Hogan broke character and whispered to Undertaker that he was hurt for real. Once Hogan got backstage, the Hulkster allegedly asked to speak to his wife and kids due to how much pain he was in. Undertaker felt awful for not only hurting mm. a fellow wrestler, but also for potentially ending the career of WWE's most uh -huh. popular wrestler. Taker could have even been fired for such a big mistake. Yeah. However, Shane McMahon informed The Undertaker that Hulk Hogan's head never hit the chair or mat. When the dead man confronted Hogan about the incident, the Hulkster still stuck to his story, now saying that his neck was jammed because of how tightly The Undertaker's knees were around his head. Despite that, Hulk Hogan continued to wrestle for over a decade, hmm. and The Undertaker went on to become one of the greatest of all time. Hmm, that story seems quite peculiar. Huh. It seems as if he was trying to sabotage The Undertaker. Huh. It's not out the realm of possibility if y'all know the truth behind that particular story because Hulk Hogan was that guy. He he was all he was more so about himself because he, he knew he was the biggest thing in wrestling. But at one point he started to realize he wasn't the biggest thing in wrestling anymore. And there was younger talent that was becoming more over. And uh yeah. He definitely wasn't like that. So I wonder if that played into it. I wonder if he was bullshitting, trying to make it seem as uh, the Undertaker is an unsafe individual when that may not have been the case. I don't know. But comment down below. Let me know um, which part of this video, which story did you find out um, for the first time watching this video? Like, you didn't know this was a thing. Like, let me know what surprised you the most story-wise from this particular video. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K, and I'm seeing you in the YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.